Hello everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week analysis for Thursday, Friday 23rd of December. Sorry, Thursday 23rd of December, Friday was closed on the 24th Christmas Eve to observe Christmas. And a very, very Merry Christmas to all members. The main wave counts expected upward movement. It is again exactly what we're getting. I've got short, mid and long term targets now. Short term target 4871 about there. We may see a consolidation or a pullback to last one or two weeks. And then the next target will be 4960, another consolidation or pullback to last maybe two to three weeks. And then the final target for the bullish run to end is currently at 5105. There is still a limit at 5615. When this bullish run is over, I will expect a primary degree second wave correction to last probably months and to probably meet the technical definition of a bear market. We do still have alternates with some adjustment, but they have a low probability. Elliott wave analysis first, classic analysis last. This main Elliott Wave account has more support from classic technical analysis. It expects that the bull run is continuing. A fourth wave at cycle degree ends here in March 2020 and a fifth wave at cycle degree begins which may be unfolding as an impulse and primary wave one within it may be incomplete. And then we'll have two, three, four and five. This is all going to take a few years to continue. I am looking at grand super cycle wave one possibly ending in 2029. If the 2020s mirror the 1920s, they both began with a global pandemic. We haven't had one of those in over a in 100 years. And now we may, we've had another one and we may be now be having the roaring 2020s to mirror the roaring 1920s with some weakness developing as we get toward the end of primary one. By the time we get to the end of grand super cycle one, I would expect a lot of internal weakness in this bull market. There just isn't enough yet for that kind of huge trend change. And we've still got some structure to complete. Within primary wave one, we have some intermediate one, intermediate two, intermediate three, and it looks like an extension, but it's actually shorter in length than intermediate one, intermediate four, and now intermediate five also is showing its subdivisions at lower time frames. Intermediate three is 59.85 points shorter in length or less than intermediate wave one. A core Elliott wave rule states that intermediate wave three may not be the shortest out of one, three and five. And so that limits five to no longer than a quality in length with three at 5615.34. Within intermediate 5, minor wave 2 may not move beyond the start of 1, below 4278.94. When the structure of intermediate 5 is complete, I will then expect a trend change at primary degree and a deep pullback likely for primary 2, which at that stage may not move beyond the start of primary 1, below 2191.86. But we are not there yet. There is not enough technical evidence of weakness in here for a change from bull to bear. Not yet, but it's starting to develop. I expect it will develop further, particularly when we get to the AD line charts. We'll look at that. Let's take a look now at the daily chart. We have this high and this low, intermediate three and four. Is this point here and here, intermediate four, subdivides very nicely as a double zigzag. That's a really common Elliott wave structure where four ends, five begins, and intermediate five looks like it's going to be unfolding as an impulse. The first wave up at minor degree looks like a really good five wave impulse. One, two, extended three, four, five. Minor wave two is most likely over here as a triple zigzag, not a common structure. It's uncommon, but it's not rare. I have seen a few, and the subdivisions at the hourly chart level all have a really good fit. It looks most likely that minor 2 is over there and minor 3 has begun. A target for minor 3 is for it to reach a quality and length with minor 1 at 4960. That's the ratio I'm using for this third wave because it fits with the higher target I'm calculating for intermediate 5 to reach 0.618, the length of 3 at 5105. Remember from the weekly chart, intermediate 3 was shorter than 1, so I'm expecting intermediate 5 to not be extended to be shorter than 1 and 3. That's why I'm using that Fibonacci ratio to calculate this target for intermediate 5. Were it to reach the most common ratio, equality and length with intermediate 1, that would be invalid. So I can't use that ratio in this instance. 
So with 5105, we see 4960 below that, so that fits within minor wave 3, which may only subdivide as an impulse. Minute 1 and 2 may be complete. Minute 3 may only subdivide as an impulse. And I can use the most common Fibonacci ratio for this. Minute 3 will reach 1.618, the length of minute 1, at 4871. This fits with the higher targets. When minute 3 is a complete impulse, the minute 4 should unfold, may last 1 to 2 weeks, and must remain above wave 1 price territory. At that point in time, the invalidation point will be at this high here. And just interesting to note, the rule is very clear. The fourth wave may not overlap first wave price territory. When the second wave is an expanded flat, as this one is here, it can overlap second wave price territory, and the rule remains unbroken. The rule is clear, it can't overlap first wave price territory. When the fourth wave is over, then the fifth wave should unfold, and then minor wave four should unfold and remain above wave one price territory. When minor three is complete, the invalidation point will move up to here. We'll then expect another pullback or consolidation for minor wave four to last maybe two to three weeks, and then on to the final target up for minor five. Just to note, these targets will probably either change or widen to small zones as there's more structure complete. For example, within minor three, when I have all of one, two, three, and four complete, I can add to the target calculation at a second degree, at minute degree. At that stage, if I can find two targets at minor and minute degree that are really close, then we'll have a little zone and it'll have a higher probability. As waves come to an end and there's more structure, once the third and fourth waves within an impulse are complete, that's what I'm going to do always. I'm going to add as many degrees of calculation as I can and try and find a confluence, a, a clustering of targets, which would have then a higher probability and zone in as we get to the end on the highest probability target I can calculate for you. Okay. Within minute wave 3, no second wave correction may move beyond its start below 4531.10. And I would expect at this stage in this upward structure for the upcoming minuet 2 to be relatively brief and shallow. We should start to see an increase in upward momentum a little bit next week. At the daily chart level, if we move the degree of labelling within this triple zigzag down one degree, it's still possible to see minor 2 could be continuing sideways as a regular flat. A, B, C to subdivide 3, 3, 5. Within a regular flat or within a flat correction, wave A must be a corrective structure. It can be a multiple zigzag. Wave B must be a corrective structure and must retrace a minimum 90% the length of A. This one has, it's a 99% the length of A, indicating a regular flat because it's less than 1.05. The most common ratio for C is for it to reach equality in length with A at 4492. And C may find support at the lower edge of this Elliott channel. You draw it from the start of A to the end of B. Place a parallel copy on the end of A. Minor 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below 4278.94. If we see a new low below that point, then the bearish wave count would be indicated, but it has a low probability. I'm going to continue to publish this because it does remain valid. Minute B could have moved higher on Thursday. This is a valid wave count. It just doesn't have as much support from classic analysis with some bullishness now in the AD line and in inverted VIX. For the short term, that is. At the weekly chart level, this is the alternate. It's possible primary 1 was over here. Primary 2 could be moving sideways as a flat correction. A, incomplete, and then B and C to complete. At the daily chart level, this high here, this point here, here's A, A, B, C, a flat, and then we'd need B and C. B could move beyond the start of A, as in an expanded flat, and then C would be expected to move beyond the end of A. This wave count expects overall sideways movement in an ever-decreasing range for some weeks. Okay, classic analysis now. Let's see how bullish or bearish it's looking this week. This week, an outside week, a higher high and a lower low, overall upward movement. Volume is declining with upward movement, but it was a short week for a holiday week. So that's not really particularly indicative of anything. Here we have it, a high, a pullback, a breakthrough, a back test of support, another little test of support. I would expect now to see price move up and away. This is a really typical, normal look 
after a breakthrough, a test of support is really common. So let's expect support to hold about 4545. On balance volume is also constrained. The support line has some reasonable technical significance. So if we did see another downward week, I'd expect it to not be particularly by much. This would tend to support the main Elliott wave count, not the alternate, which would have to break through support here. RSI is in neutral territory. ADX is declining. The DX lines are whipsawing. No clear trend at this time frame. It just can't catch up with all these little pullbacks along the way. And stochastics entering overbought, that really doesn't mean much because pretty obviously it can remain overbought for a very, very long period of time while my price, my, while price moves a considerable distance. At the daily chart level, Wednesday or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, reasonable upward day, but declining volume and declining range in current market conditions, that's actually not of a concern, that can continue for quite a way while price moves a considerable distance. On a closing basis, price has closed to a new high, but it hasn't made a new all-time high on a closing basis. But the close of Thursday's session is above the opens and the closes of these pre previous sessions here. Let's look for support now about 4725. I would expect after Thursday's session to see price move up and away next week. And I'd also expect another back test of support after we get that. That would again be absolutely normal behaviour. On balance volume remains constrained. The resistance line has more technical significance than the support line here, but it's a reasonable distance away. At the daily chart level, ADX now indicates an upward trend in a very early stage. This is a really bullish signal from ADX. RSI is neutral, so there's plenty of room for an upward trend to continue before conditions become extreme. Stochastics entering overbought, but we'll use RSI, not stochastics, in a trending market. ATR was increasing as price falls, a little decline at the end of the week. Absolutely normal behaviour. What about breadth and volatility? Both price and the AD line have moved higher. Price is pretty close to all-time highs, hasn't quite managed to make it. The AD line's a lot further off though. If we see a new all-time high next week, then we're going to start to have over a month of bearish divergence between price and the AD line. Now remember, there are only three bear markets in the last 100 years, 1946, 1976, and 2020, that occurred after less than three months or no bearish divergence between price and the AD line. The last all-time high from the AD line was back here and there was only two weeks of bearish divergence before price moved into this consolidation. If we get new all-time highs from price next week and the AD line doesn't follow through, we're going to start to see a little bit of a longer bearish divergence and let's see how that develops. I would expect as primary wave one comes to an end, we're going to start to get closer to that three month minimum bearish divergence. Once we get to that point and the Elliott wave structure is complete, this analysis will turn bearish, but we are not there yet. It's not quite set up yet. It's getting there though. A little bit of bullishness from the AD line this week. A couple of bullish signals for the very short term. Unsurprising, we got more upward movement on Thursday. Price has made new highs, new short term swing highs, but the AD line hasn't, and it's a lot further off from its all time highs. There is still a developing cluster of bearish divergence between price and the AD line. Between inverted VIX, price and inverted VIX both moved higher this week. No new short-term divergence. For VIX and VVIX, they both moved lower this week. VIX has made a new short-term swing low, but VVIX has not. Volatility of VIX remains elevated. This is bearish for price for the short term. And at the daily chart level, there were a couple of weak bullish signals from inverted VIX. Unsurprisingly, we're getting some short-term upward movement. Both inverted VIX and price have moved higher on Thursday. There is no new short-term divergence. Both VIX and VVIX have moved lower on Friday. There is still short-term bearish divergence here. That's all from me at the end of the week, and I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas.